Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 803, and this is the first of a four-part series where I convert this little South Men Model C donated by John Collins into a South Men Model A. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, upon suggestion from my buddy Roger Taylor, a former shop teacher in California, he said, why don't you convert it? And he sent me a new apron and a new screw for the cross feed. And uh, there are several other modifications that I have to make. And uh, then we'll have a Model B, which will be a little bit nicer to use because it will have a power cross feed and it'll have a clutch and all of that good stuff. Now let's talk about the differences between models A, B, and C in the 9-inch series of South Bend Lays. I have covered this in other videos, but that's been a while ago, so let's go through that all again, shall we? You are now looking at a page from the 1952 South Bend catalog, and we're going to look at models A, B, and C, and they mark them good, better, and best, just as Sears did with many of the products in their thick old catalog. But notice now with model A here, it comes equipped with a quick change gearbox and the apron that is full featured with the clutch and the power crossfeed. And now you are looking at Model B 9-inch lathe, and it is the better one, and that is what I'm going to convert my Model C into. Notice that there is no quick change gearbox, however there is the deluxe carriage and apron, full featured with half nut lever, cross feed power, and a clutch. And last but not least is the Model C, and that is what I currently own, donated by John, and it would be labeled as good because it's a rather stripped down model without a quick change gearbox and without the deluxe apron. It is not fully featured, it does not have a clutch or power cross feed, however it does have a half nut so you can thread and you can use the half nut for power feed, which is not always a good thing. So they had three different models that would appeal to many different pocketbooks. Good, better, and best. So let's change the good into a better. And here is a picture of the Model A apron donated by Roger Taylor that I intend to install in my machine. And here is the South Bend 9-inch apron from the inside. You normally can't see this view unless you disassemble the machine. This is a view from the parts catalog of the apron on the Model C. Notice how simple it is and how few parts that it has when you compare it to the apron off of the Model A and B. You can see why it would cost much, much more. Well, it was several months ago that Roger Taylor sent me a box, and he had this so well packed that even the United States Post Office couldn't wreck it. So let's pull that out, and I think this is going to be an easy swap, where I just take the old one off, and put the new one on, and here is the screw, which barely fit in the box. But of course, no job is really easy, is it? Let's take a look at the back side of this thing. Well, here's the back side, and I already showed you a nice picture of this, so I don't think it's much different, but uh, this is the crank, of course, and the gear that engages the rack and allows you tr to traverse from left to right, and of course, both aprons have a half nut or a split nut lever for threading, and this large gear here, of course, is the gear that brings the power up to this gear on the cross feed screw and allow you to have a power feed on the cross feed. And back on the front, of course, we have a clutch which is not on the Model C, and this is the feed change lever. The middle position is for threading, this position is for 
power cross feed, and the upper position, as you know, is for power longitudinal feed. So in review, to convert this from a C to an A, I have to, as I already said, change the apron, and it will be a different lead screw because the lead, this lead screw does not have a keyway in it. Whereas we need a keyway in the lead screw, and I should have showed you that on the apron, I'll show you that later on. So I will have to cut a keyway in this, and of course we're replacing the screw, as I said, and then notice that on the gear guard here we have a chart to change all of the gears so those are the three or four differences and I may have left something out that constitute the difference between models A, B, and C. Is that clear as mud? Well if that's all there is to converting this why am I making four videos out of it instead of one. It looks like it's a 15 minute job and of course I've rehearsed this, I've gone through this so I don't bumble myself through it too badly although I might do that too but uh, there's a lot of different steps here and uh, you'll see as I go along. Make sure you watch all parts, uh, all four parts. So let's begin now by taking it apart. Well let's start by getting the tail stock out of the way. That comes off easily enough. And the compound have already loosened these two screws with an Allen wrench, so this will come right off. You usually have to wiggle it, not much to it. Now I'll take the crossfeed off. Next I will remove the bearing support for the lead screw because I want to take the lead screw off. There's just two screws for that. And next I have to remove this large gear. South Bend uses kind of a funny screw here to hold the cranks on, so make yourself a little screwdriver like this, just out of an older screwdriver, and you can grind that out with your Dremel tool, and that makes it so easy to remove this, and a matter of fact, I don't know how else you might do it without damaging it. And don't lose any of the parts. And there's a little bit of a key in there. Do not lose that little key. It's just a little piece of round rod. And then the graduated dial will come off. And then finally we have to remove this piece. I'm not sure what it is called. And it's threaded right into the casting here. Now I'm a little embarrassed to even show you the, this temporary spanner that I made. But it works great. I made it in five minutes. But do not pound on it. Don't, don't just take a pin punch and pound on it or you will mutilate this hole which is already semi-mutilated. So it's been off before. And now the screw will pull out from this end. Actually, this is a pretty straightforward disassembly. Now, there's two screws here that hold the apron onto the saddle. So I'm going to take those out. But remember, the lead screw is still in place. And now the lead screw can be pulled out. This larger part with my finger on it is what prevented me from pulling it out without taking the apron off. Now treat this with great care. Now examining this you'll see that there is no I'm rotating it in case you can't tell there is no keyway on it. 
And they saved five dollars at that time by not doing that, but they had a double inventory that they had to keep. Okay, here are the two aprons, and I think that they interchange. I believe that the bolt pattern is the same, but researching the parts manual did not help me a whole lot in determining that. Again, this little apron weighs almost nothing, and look how simple it is on the back side when you compare it to this apron, which weighs twice as much and has three times as many parts, it is so much more complicated. Okay, this is the screw that I just took out of the Model C. This is the one given to me by Roger. They are not the same. This one is much longer, but maybe it'll work. We'll see here in a second. I hope it does. But look at the difference right uh, here. This is the crank end. That's, there's quite a bit of difference there. But we have to have a gear on this one in order for it to work and, and to give me a power cross feed. So I don't know. This looks like it's not going to work. I sure hope it will. Let me show you some pictures out of the parts list. Well, I notice that for each model of a lathe, there are at least two different screws. One if it has a taper attachment and one if it does not. So if you look right here, it says that for Model C, without taper attachment and with taper attachment, and then up here you can't read it, but that one is for Models A and B. Well, let's go over to the lathe with this one and see if it's going to fit. To my knowledge, nobody else on YouTube has made this video. Let me know if you like it, and I'll put down in the uh, description some of the other videos that I have where I talk about the apron and all of the different parts. I take one apart and I clean it, so <coughs> check those out if you want. Okay, let me put the original screw back in just so you can compare. So it goes in like that, and you can see how much we have sticking out here for the crank and the graduated dial and notice that the length of it is right about at the end of the casting here. Now let's put the other one in from Roger that is so much longer with the gear on it. And it sticks out here. But the gear itself seems to be in the wrong position in there. Now looking at this end, I'll put the graduated collar back on. And you can see it is not the right length because the ball crank here will install up to that shoulder. So we've got about three-eighths of an inch there that we can't use. Now I suppose that possibly could be spaced out. But thinking about this, because it's several hours later, what I'm going to do, and it won't be easy, is to make and install a gear on the old one. And that will be the subject of part two of this video. So looking at it one more time here, you can see that there are different lengths here. And another thing that is going to be bothersome to me is that it appears that this gear was cut and it's, this is all one piece. It's not a separate gear that was slid on or pressed on or in some way fastened on. This is all one piece. So to make a gear for this, I'm not even sure I can do it. Possibly I'll have to look on eBay and try to find the correct screw, but since I'm a machinist, of course I'm going to give it the old college try. But I'll have to admit I'm a bit discouraged right now. Matter of fact, more than a bit. As a matter of fact, I'm so discouraged, I'm quitting for the day. But I want you to watch Tips 804, which will be part two, where I attempt to make that gear, and it won't be easy because there's just an awful lot of steps, especially to make a real tiny, thin-walled gear like that, that almost looks somewhat delicate, and I hope I have the right cutter to make it. So be sure and watch 
all of the still pictures that I have at the end of this and every other video if you like this kind of stuff because you may be doing some kind of repairs on your South Bend. They made an awful lot of these. And I will see you in that next Tips 803 where we give the gear cutting a try. I'd like to do it on my little clausing milling machine rather than the bridge pour. So I, that, that is my plan for that. So I'll see you in a week. So long for now. This is Mr. Pete saying be sure and watch my other videos.